Mm -hmm. Oh, it's getting warm. Hey, everybody, it's Elizabeth, and welcome back. So, randomly today, I decided I would. I'm kind of doing some like home study farm things, and um, my husband and I were just digging through our building looking for a, a decor specific thing. When we couldn't find it, I started looking for my fall decor, the rest of it, got that pulled out. And then um, we got it going through our deep freezers and inventorying everything. And that's where you would see the opening video of me um, having some frozen potatoes in my roasting pan. Look at this. This started out over 25 pounds of whole frozen tomatoes about four hours ago. And they've been just defrosting, cooking, whatever. Um, after about two hours and of course I did have them at like 400 degrees I believe after about four hours I came through with a potato masher mashed them all up lid back on let them roll again for another two hours then I came through with my immersion blender love this thing blended them all up however there are still chunks in here like this see I don't like this this is the skin it's because we did not skin it okay um, and it just depends on how much time prep wise you want to spend on the front end. But anyway, so this is what I'm doing. I've got a big mess here. It's okay. It's part of the process. Um, I'm going through and I'm getting out my gold and I'm putting it through my sieve. Okay. You can use cheesecloth, whatever, but this is what I'm using because I love it. It's handy. It's got the little hook on this side here so I can place it on my bigger bowl and that's what I'm gonna can right there that's my tomato juice homegrown tomato juice so I'm just sitting here here's my kind of pulp that's left over I will likely put that through the sieve again but I'm just coming through here and I'm moving pieces what this is doing is it's catching the skin and the seeds um, I have canned all this stuff before it really is just a matter of preference. Anyways, um, so real time for us, this is a weekend before Halloween. So today I also made the kids some Halloween cupcakes. Those were so good. I had one, debating having a second, but trying to be fit and healthy every day and everything I do. So, you know, one is probably enough. Um, I've got my pan here going with... Uh, lids and rings. I've got my hot water bath canner here getting ready to boil. Got to put my crock pot up. This is what we had dinner in. It's been washed already. Um, and then on my island, I've got my mason jars. These have been cleaned, disinfected, sterilized. And I started trying to do the sieve per jar. And it was really running down each side, just getting real messy. So I'm like, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to do a big bowl and then we'll transfer, transfer. So this is what I'm working on. But anyways, so I'll just kind of show you how many this ends up being. Um, it definitely would make more if I was not putting it through this through the sieve because I'm taking some of that bulk away. But anyways, eager to see how many it makes. Tomato juice is our absolutely favorite thing to can. Um, it's what we use the most. We use it in soups and chilies all throughout the year. And our tomato crop this year was terrible. So we did not have a ton. So what we did bring in that we did not fresh eat, we threw in the freezer. And then everything that came out of the garden last year in 2022 from about August to October that went into the freezer as well because I was too busy and didn't have time to can. And uh, that's what we canned today. So these are mostly 22 tomatoes. 2022 tomatoes. But anyways, so really glad to get that done. Believe it or not, that has been on my personal to-do list for like a year. So <laughs> here we are. We're doing it. Ooh, look at those beauties. Perfectly made six. I had seven jars prepared. Look at my mess. Here's my excess and all my stuff to clean up. Thank goodness for adding this island this year because this is where I got my cans ready and where my cans are going to go as they come out. So anyways, exciting. I'm about to drop them down. Welcome back. So today I'm going to give you guys a look 
at everything in the kitchen garden and just kind of around after we had our first frost here in Arkansas. We've actually had multiple frosts now and I have not come out here to film this because I've been pretty busy but also had a stomach bug and then we had some things going on with family. So my husband did come out and tear out a couple of things for me. Um, everything else I've left to just show you what it looks like and it's awful sad. All right, let's see. There wasn't, there hasn't been much in this bed for a while. Um, I need to harvest this though. I need to do that because we're just getting into really poopy weather. I'm gonna take this guy in. This is a house plant. A little fall decor. Um, yeah, we haven't had anything on here for a while. We had lots of peppers in here. You can see all of this. Sweet potato vines all died back. These were sweet peppers. This is stevia, which is a perennial herb. And then just peppers in here. They're just all gone. You can see we've had lots of leaves fall. From our oak trees. Um, right here we had some tomatoes. And those finally all died back. This is Rebecca, which is a flower. It's a perennial. So it's still doing fine. We had the blackberries in containers here. And we took those in the house because I wasn't going to have time to transplant them before the frost. <clears throat> See over here. This is a perennial um, hibiscus. This is, I thought, a flower, like a Cosmo, but it never did anything. And that was a basil. It's died back. Look, this is the actual annual hibiscus. I'm surprised it is still alive. I'm not going to attempt to overwinter this because I don't have enough room in the house. Because I brought in uh, my citrus trees and stuff. That, I'm not sure what that is. I bought that as a container combo. So it had this little plant down in here. And then this taller plant. I will probably just, when I come through and cut my perennials back, I'll probably just cut this back here and leave it and see if it'll come back. <laughs> Tiny little rose. Still trying to butt up. Isn't that crazy? Or maybe it just froze like that. Um, these potatoes. I need to go through these and see if it was, uh, you know, if it made any. I'm sure it did. So, I'll do that. And then, this was a canna, which is a flower. It could not handle any amount of cold. This also is both potatoes. That was an annual flower. This is a sterling. This was sedum, which is a succulent, and it died. Oh, let's see. This bush is still doing pretty good. That's nice. This is another perennial hibiscus. Need to fix this. I don't know why that's sagging. Hollyhock will look like this all winter long. Mm, this is a perennial hibiscus of a different variety, but you can see it's trying to die back. And here's another one of those. Perennial hibiscus. This is a perennial flower. I'd already cut it back because it was already dying back. This is a grass, purple fountain grass. Here the cows. Willow tree. Corkscrew willow tree. Doing good. So definitely have a lot to clean up. In here. Before we kind of tuck things away for winter. Mexican petunias. I'm surprised that these are still 
alive because you can see normally they look like this frost bit but these guys here are still okay and then this rose is still okay this evergreen here is doing great this guy this tree has lost all of its leaves almost got some baby sprawling roses down here which are still green this is a succulent still green and this crepe myrtle it's lost all of its flowers starting to lose its leaves this one will cut way back to about four feet above the ground got a lot of stuff to clean up in here this is another perennial hibiscus that will be cut down to the ground Look, you see the fireplace on in there? That's like a TV screensaver. <laughs> Anyways, in this container we had um, sweet potato vines and petunias. And those have died, so I've got to come in and clean those up. I need to clean up all these leaves. Um, oh, this looks fine. I'm filming a garden tour really quick. Uh -oh. This, this looks like this was the. Do you know what the is? Get out of there, maple. Leave it. What is it? Well, I was playing with this, and it. So this is that pop tart hydrangea, and it's been kind of frost bit. Maple, get out of there. Out, out. Thank you. Um, these guys were just transplanted a couple weeks ago, and they're doing great. These are perennials. I can't think of what these are called. If I remember later, I'll put it in the bottom of the screen. This is our Colorado Blue Spruce we transplanted a couple weeks ago. It's doing really well. Um, let's see. I've not looked up much around here. This is our fern. I had talked about bringing it in the house and then didn't. And now it's been outside through two frosts, and I can't believe it's even survived. Got my, what is that? Not Rebecca. I can't remember what that's called. Anyway, I'd hate for it to just die. I need to find somewhere for it inside. Um, we've got lemon balm dying back. L little yellow roses. Mm, that smells good. So most everything throughout here will die back fully in the wintertime. I want to take you over to what we recently put in the ground because I don't think we did any videos on this. This is our pear tree that we had over in the backyard. And we transplanted over here to our side yard to be closer to home. To keep a better eye on it, water it, make it so it's easier to water. Here is our apple tree, which was over in front of the old cottage garden this guy is tall probably nine or ten feet tall anyways it's losing its leaves and stuff but we brought it over here um, just kind of for some proximity of where we are we're just to the left of the front yard and we were talking about creating like a wall of green here in the future so we bought this um, this I can't remember what, what they are right now off the top of my mind um, but it's going to get, this one came from over at the old cottage garden. So it had been there for a year and it was doing so good and it has transplanted so lovely. Absolutely love this. So this guy is probably, I don't know, maybe three and a half feet tall doing really, really good. And this will get to be eventually a tree that's like 30 feet wide. So it's going to be a monster. And then we've got this one. Which is, I think, the same variety. And it still has a tag. So, let's see. Yeah, it's a cypress. Leland cypress. So, same thing. Bought this guy, though, locally. So, he's a little bit smaller. This right here, I'm not sure if we're, it's going to make it. We'll have to wait until um, <laughs> the spring. This was what I had showed you guys. I had planted by our mailbox. And it was supposed to be a honeysuckle vine. 
and instead it was a honeysuckle small tree. So we transplanted it to give it the space it would need and it just dropped all of its leaves and looks miserable. But I don't recall if it dropped leaves every winter before or not. This guy, we love this guy. Look at the color on this. <laughs> so beautiful. Oh, I think I have this written down somewhere what it is. But anyways, love this guy. Just really sprawly. He's not going to get real huge. Um, in fact, the tallest it'll get is maybe um, two and a half or three feet tall. But it'll sprawl like four to five feet around. So I would love to get some more of those. And then right here, which you can't see from everywhere, but right there I used to have the zebra grass. And this is it. We dug it up and divided it into three. And this is one of them. So here's one, which I'll cut this back soon, unless I just leave this for winter interest. There's one. Here's the second one. You can see this one's not died back yet. You can see the zebra stripes. So this is the second one. And here is the third one right here, which was a lot smaller. So then whenever you look, what we'll do probably in the spring is we want to incorporate all these new things in with the Japanese maple right there. And I've got some evergreens planted in here. And we're going to buy three or four more things. I think two more trees that will be big. One will be here. And I think the other one over here maybe. And then we want a couple more small like shrubby things. And then I plan to incorporate this here. Bring this where this front bed ends here. We're going to bring it this way and we're going to mulch all of this. Wrap it around there. Come around here around here and then all the way up here to this apple tree back around to there so this will all be like a black mulch which will be really nice so here's what we're left with and my husband's over there working on the fire pit <laughs> gonna do some roasting of marshmallows tonight but anyways this is what it looks like so i don't know if i will be filming working on this um i probably won't film working on this and i don't know if I'll film any more garden tours for the rest of the year. So I'm just giving you that disclosure up front in case I don't. Um, because I don't know what else is going to be happening in here. For the next few months, especially when while garden season has the mandatory gardening has wound down. I'm going to be continuing to focus on my health and my fitness and my family. And so um, as well as the recent... Um, blog that I launched which if you're curious about that it's in the description below and I'll cover different topics I have my content schedule planned out for like the next three months in advance so that will be really fun um, but again just takes up some time and then we will eventually come through clean up all these things and some at some point over the winter we will be adding um, more blocks to every single one of these um, at least one more row of blocks on all four of them. And in fact, that was probably all we'll do this, this winter. We'll probably do a row of blocks each winter. That was the original plan. Um, until we've got, you know, three or four high where I can just sit on the side and have to do way less bending. But the reason we're not doing them all at once is because just the cost of buying the blocks as well as the cost of the soil to fill them. So they'll be getting refilled this year. Um, I have looked at some different little mini greenhouse scenarios that are three by six that you can set on raised beds. Part of me would really like to do that because I love winter gardening and it's nice to kind of still be doing some things. But I just don't know. And before I did that, I would make sure that I had the other stuff done. Which is the, the new blocks and everything. So we can get them on and we can add the soil, but we can't paint until the spring because we're not going to have enough warm days for paint to dry properly. So anyways, that's what's up with uh, this space for now. I will, I think I will go ahead and bring you guys another garden tour after I get all of my cleanup done so you can see what this space is going to look like over winter. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys have a wonderful day.